the bondage of racism. We need... I'm at Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California. Hundreds of folks are gonna come here to witness the Beyonce Mass, bringing together secular music and a religious message to tell a story of empowerment for particularly women of color, but for anyone who happens to sing praises to the goddess herself, Beyonce. Y'all, I'm out of breath because we sing Beyonce in church. <laughs> Holy cow! Uh, we do have a community that is youthful and loving and looks to the world as a partner, not an enemy. So if that's new to you, I hope it's good news. God actually loves you. What can you tell me about the progressive nature of Grace Cathedral? I think a lot of the people who show up tonight are people of color, LGBT people, people on whom other people's narratives have been projected. And I mean, just to be honest, the church hasn't been the best about lifting up those voices. It really began as us saying, how can we actually be the people of God that we hope to be in the world? And Beyonce is the perfect passage to get that message out there. Honestly, I think Beyonce is a better theologian than many of the pastors and priests in our church today. That is not an exaggeration. According to a recent Gallup poll, Catholic church attendance has gone down nearly 40% since the 1950s. But tonight's Beyonce Mass is set to draw crowds in the hundreds. And though I don't consider Beyonce to be a religious symbol, like some of her most ardent fans, there's no denying her strong use of religious symbolism throughout her music and performances. Paying homage to everything from female African deities, The Last Supper, Black Madonna, and the Virgin Mary herself. I spoke with Reverend Yolanda Norton, Beyonce fan and organizer of the event, to find out where the idea came from to mix Beyonce with the Bible. The event was born out of a class that I teach mm -hmm. uh, called Beyonce in the Hebrew Bible. So I walked them through this process of thinking about how the music of Beyonce helped us have conversations about black women and how we worship and our mm -hmm. spirituality. So talk me through how you analyze a song like Flaws and All for your students. She has this ambiguous audience, right, in the song. Maybe it's Jay-Z, maybe it's her fans. But I love it when she says, you know, I'm a train wreck. I'm a train wreck in the morning. I'm, I'm a, a bitch, bitch in the, the afternoon, afternoon, right? I'm a bitch in the afternoon. Every now and then, without warning, I can be really mean to you. Right. I can be really mean toward you. So what we do in the worship service is we make that about a conversation that we would have with God. So if you imagine that as a prayer to God, how I many... I don't know why you love me. me and, and that's, that's why, why I, I love you, you right? I neglect you when I'm working. Yep, we all do that, right? So it's really about naming black female spirituality is embodied in that song. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. We live in a world where a mostly male church debates whether or not women should be ordained. Mm -hmm. But Jesus chose Mary of Nazareth, a woman of color, and another woman of color, Mary of Magdala to be the prophet of the resurrection. So what is very clear to me is that God is a lot more comfortable in trusting his power and authority to women of color than the church is. I've been asked time and time again, why Beyonce? I believe that she reminds us that sometimes you have to do your thing your way. You don't do it on demand. You don't do it for your oppressor. You don't sing when they want you to sing. You sing when God tells you to sing. Never give them your song. Beyonce didn't become Beyonce on her own. I'm not standing in front of you because of anything that I've done. I'm here because of the Mary Nortons of the world, the Daisy Washingtons of the world. These are women whose names you'll never know, but black women who fought to their core to make sure that there was a better tomorrow for those who could stand in front of you and say, as a black woman, I am created in the image of God and I am here to change the game and make the world a better place. I'm 
unapologetically a minister of the gospel. I am unapologetically a biblical scholar. And I am unapologetically a Beyonce fan. And I don't feel like I need to apologize for any of those things. I think that Yolanda's sermon of knowing when to hold on to the hands that are next to you and, and stand tall and to not give up, those are messages that are not exclusive to just a woman of color experience. Those messages are necessary for everyone. And to use Beyonce and her music as a platform to bring people into the church to hear the message was truly, truly powerful. Hey, I'm a keeper on the